Stem and leaf plots and histograms are two different ways to organize information so that we can take a lot of individual bits of data and put them together in a format that makes more sense from, from an immediate glance so that uh, it's a little easier to, to understand what those bits of data represent. What I have here is just basically a random series of numbers and I want to show you how these numbers would fit into a stem and leaf plot or a histogram. So the first one we'll do is the stem and leaf. Oops. Oh, we ought to get a color that works, huh? It's one you can see. I know, picky, aren't I? Let's try that. There we go. So we'll do the stem and leaf first. A stem and leaf plot is called that because we use one set of numbers to represent sort of a trunk or a stem of a whole group of other numbers that are related. We do that by, um, in this case, since all of our numbers are two-digit, we make a trunk that represents the tens column for each number. So we have a zero and a one, and a 2, and a 3, and a 4 in this case because we don't have any numbers that are any higher than the 40s. And then we draw sort of a dividing line. And then on the other side of that, that trunk number, we put each of the numbers that falls into that tens column. So we have uh, just a single digit 7 that doesn't have a tens column. Um, and we have an 8 and another 7. So we have an 8 and another 7. And those all fit into you know basically where the tens column is 0. And then where the tens column is 1, we have the number 13. So we leave the 1 on the left. It's, it shows the 10 over there. And we just put the 3 from the 13 on the right. And we do the same thing with the 15. And then that looks like and the 19. And then for 20s, we have 24, 26, 27. So we just put a 4, a 6, and a 7 in the 2 run. And then we have 32, 34, 38. So we have 2, 4, and 8. And then we have 45, 42, 44, 48. So 2, 5, 4, 8. So by putting it into the stem and leaf format, we can see right away that there's more numbers in the 40s than there are in any other area. And that certainly wasn't immediate, immediately apparent just by glancing at the numbers. We can also see that most of the numbers in the tens column or in the, the, the ones column are higher numbers. They're all you know seven, eight, and nine or seven and eight here. They're they're all right near the top, whereas they're a little more distributed for some of the others here. We have numbers down in the twos uh, for the thirties and the twos for the forties. So it gives us a sort of an immediate picture of where what range the numbers fall into without actually losing the accurate data of specifically which number is which. We know for sure exactly what number is in which column. I mean, I know this represents 24 exactly, not just something in the 20s, it's 24. But because of that, it also gets to be still a little bit, uh, uh, maybe a little bit more data than we need. It's a little bit difficult to just glance at and see right away where things fall. That's where a histogram comes in. With a histogram, we can take the same data, and although we lose this, the very specific information about each one, we can sort of gain a little bit more of a quick glance at where things are. So if I make a quick histogram here and write out the numbers 0 through 40, and then I'll put the numbers 1 through 5 on the left, say, now what I can do is use the histogram to specify how many numbers there are in each column. So between 0 and 10, we have a total of three numbers. So what I might do is make a histogram that just shows that there's three numbers in that range between 0 and 10. And I can sort of shade that in and show that uh, that's about how many numbers are in that area. Then in between 10 and 20, I had another three numbers. So I'd do the same thing, and I'd shade that in there, showing between 10 and 20 there were three numbers. And then between 20 and 30, the same thing. And then between 30 and 40, the same thing. And then above 40, we had one more. We had four numbers. So we can glance then, just by having those things shaded in with the histogram, we can glance at the information right away and see um, immediately apparent that there's more 40s than anything else, which we could tell with this other. But this is just a little bit of a cleaner representation of where the numbers are grouped. We do, however, lose the accurate, specific data about what each number is. We don't know which numbers in the 40s are over here or which numbers in the, the 30s are over here, um, although we do gain that sort of immediate glance sort of information. So those are the uses or the, the reasons to, to put together stem and leaf plots or, his, or histograms.